I made a video that I entitled a complete guide to mountain bike suspension setup. I want to follow that video up with one talking about compression damping because in the setup video I didn't discuss it. I don't consider compression damping a setup type setting. In other words, it's not a set and forget setting like you do with sag or rebound. It's one that you would actually change frequently depending on your personal preferences and the terrain that you're riding. So sag is a very straightforward measurement. Rebound is a little bit more subjective, but it's still set up on a measurement type basis. Compression damping is very subjective, and like I said, it changes a lot during a ride. So let's first talk about what compression damping is. Compression damping is simply how easily a fork or a rear shock starts its travel. In other words, how easily it starts compressing when you hit a bump. Some bikes will have high and low speed compression damping settings. And speed doesn't necessarily refer to how fast you're riding. It refers to how quickly the shock moves when it hits a bump. Your low speed compression damping settings are more for uh, the slower movement of the shock. So diving under braking or just on undulating trail, how squishy or uh, compliant the suspension feels. So you would adjust your low speed compression damping settings if you don't want the fork to dive under braking. So when you apply your brakes, the suspension can compress really easily, particularly on the front end. And if that's too much, then you want to add some compression damping. Uh, if you want to reduce the low speed compression damping, if you feel like the bike is just too harsh, and you probably want to keep backing out those settings, turning the knob counterclockwise until the bike may feel a little bit too squishy. And then you want to add some compression damping. For high speed compression damping, those are more for the hits that are square. So um, really square edged rocks or roots. And you want to add compression damping if you ride more aggressive. So in other words, you're jumping or you're hitting berms really hard and you don't want the bike to feel too squishy. Uh, you can add low or high speed compression damping settings. If you like your bike to be more sensitive to those square edged bumps, in other words, more comfortable, then you're going to back out your high speed compression damping settings by turning the knob counterclockwise. Just as a tip, you generally don't want to use sag to really fine tune the firmness of the bike. You do want to do less sag if you want a little bit firmer suspension and more sag if you want uh, a less firm suspension. However, that's just your starting point. You really want to use your compression damping settings to adjust how the bike feels in terms of firmness, you know, hitting those square edge bumps or how much it wallows in its travel. So this is the compression knob on this fork. If you had high and low speed compression settings on a Fox fork, it would be an outer ring to, to adjust your high speed and then the inner knob would adjust your low speed. This particular fork, which is a 34 fork, and the Fox 34s and 32s will only have just one compression damping setting and the 30 six and above will have the high and low speed compression damping. So for the remainder of this video, when I talk about compression damping settings, I'm just going to refer to that as in general as one setting, not high and low speed. So on this fork to adjust the compression damping, you would turn the blue lever. So turning it more clockwise to about the five o'clock position is going to be fully locked out. And I would only use that setting in uh, riding on the road or a smooth climb, maybe a fire road climb. And especially if I like to get out of my saddle. I would move it to the open setting when I'm just riding in general. I don't want to necessarily adjust it I'm more on rolling terrain, no real steep long descents. I would probably leave it there. Or if I'm climbing and the terrain is fairly rough, in other words, it's too rough to lock out the fork, then I would leave it in this setting. And then the third setting all the way open almost to the 12 o'clock position is going to be fully open. Now on this fork, you can actually adjust the firmness of that open setting. And so there's about 22 to 24 clicks that you can get on this black knob. So turning it counterclockwise is going to make it 
more plush on the open setting and, and clockwise is going to make it more firm. Of course rear shocks also have compression damping settings and it's very similar. So the blue knob here is your compression for the rear. So in the middle is going to be what used to be called Pro Pedal. It provides a platform so that you still have a pretty good amount of suspension travel without having too much pedal bob. So over here is, on some shocks, it's fully locked out. On this one, there's still a little bit of movement, but it's very firm. And you would use that on the road or on a fire road climb or when you just need a maximum amount of pedaling platform. Generally in the middle is where I leave it on most of my rides. And so if you're riding terrain that's just undulating, uh, nothing real crazy as far as descents, you can leave it there. Or if you're climbing and you want some suspension travel, the climb's pretty rough and you need traction. Traction is very important on a rough climb. And you need the suspension to move, but you also need a pedaling platform. So that's why you would leave it in the middle setting. You would move it over to the fully open position if you want the maximum amount of comfort. So the travel is going to initiate real easily, and that's for descending. Likewise, there is a setting on the Fox for shocks to adjust how plush that open setting is, just like the fork. And it's done by this black knob here. So the one is the most plush, three is the most firm. Again, that only adjusts the setting for the open setting. One thing that I want to specify is that you would not use your compression damping settings to adjust how easily the fork bottoms out. For that, you want to adjust your volume spacers. And you can adjust sag a little bit. Sag is something you want to adjust if you're not getting full travel on a bike. So you want to decrease your sag, or if you're getting too much travel, then you want to add sag. But let's focus on compression damping and volume spacing. So the, like I mentioned in the first video, you would adjust your volume spacers if you want to add progression to the fork. Think about compression damping is how easy the fork starts its travel. Adjusting the volume spacers is what happens once it's in its travel in the middle and near the end of its travel. So if you want the fork to be more progressive, in other words, it requires more effort to bottom the fork out, you're going to want to add volume spacers. Now I mentioned Fox forks in my setup video. I also want to mention that RockShox has the same concept. They call them tokens and it's done on the air spring side. So usually the left side of the fork where you add pressure for sag. So adding those tokens or volume spacers will decrease the volume in the fork, make it more progressive, make it more, require more effort to bottom the fork out. You would want to remove those tokens or volume spacers in order to allow the fork to feel more linear in the, in the middle of the travel. It will bottom out easier, but it will be more sensitive in the mid-stroke and have a more linear feel in the fork. Since we're talking about the fork, I do want to clarify that pedal bob in a bike is not really controlled too much by the front fork. The front, the front compression damping settings control more of the fork diving under braking or wallowing too much if you're out of the saddle sprinting or climbing. You would adjust the pedal bob by focusing on the compression settings of the rear shock. So that'll wrap up this video in discussing compression damping settings. As always, leave any comments or questions below and if this type of video helped you out, give it a thumbs up for me. Thanks for watching.